I buried logs in this raised bed over four years ago. And today I want to explore what happened to the logs and see if it's actually worth burying them. And after that we will do a pH and basic soil nutrient test and the results were very surprising. So we'll go back two weeks ago where the digging all began. And to dig up the raised bed we're gonna need some extra help. I'm here. Now I didn't talk too much because it was windy and chilly but what happened in these clips is we're removing the top few inches of soil into wheelbarrows to take for another raised bed as some filler material. The first impression is the soil is a little frozen at the bottom so we have to wait for it to thaw out before we come back and check it. Now we're back to continue digging and now there should be no more ice. The first thing we see is that there are a lot of earthworms in the bed. There's one here, one there. When you dig another one right there. Let's dig a little bit more. Another one there. Oh, there's another one there. And then another one there. No one. And there's a whole bunch here on this other side of the bed. And in the wheelbarrow where we put the soil, there's another earthworm there. Another two more there. And another one right here. So that means there's a lot of soil life. Another thing we find here is this log that is full of mycelium on it. Whoa! Strands and strands of this stuff. It's like a mycelium network down here. And here as we are digging, you can see there's a difference. Whoa! Whoa. So much of this mycelium. And the soil underneath here is like way fluffier. Lots of worm eggs too. The softer pieces in the raised bed has good water retention. So it's good for the crops that you're growing in the bed as a water battery. And this, some of the wood broken down and it creates like this really fluffy humus soil. We're on the next side of the bed and it has some pieces of wood that are really soft. I can just squish it and they're just breaking apart. There's a big chunk of wood we put in four years ago. And it just snapped. It's the inside oh, is wow. more of the soft stuff and it's ooh. That is so much deep. water. Look at it. Water is just dripping out and I squeeze it. So when you're burying logs about Four inch size, it takes about four years for them to break down to this stage here where they're very soft. This one's a little hard still, but I have so much mycelia. There's a few big ones that haven't decomposed, which might take another two or three years, but they'll all be a good water battery. <laughs> That's a good milk. <laughs> I've got the soil testing kit from Walmart and it was on sale so we decided to pick one up. This kit tests nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium along with the pH level of the soil. This is not a detailed test but it will give me an idea of the soil's health. And by the looks of it already, it's quite a bit of worms and there's also tons of mycelium on the logs which indicates it's a healthy soil. But let's do the test to find out whether or not it's actually healthy. I'm going to be mixing the soil in the wheelbarrow with some of the rotten particles of wood here together and then I'll do a test. So I've got both of the soil mixes all mixed up in this bowl and I'm just gonna follow the instructions on this. The green capsule is for the pH test. This reddish orange one is for potassium. The purple one is for nitrogen. And the blue one is for phosphorus. And it comes with a bag here of capsules to pour into the container. For the green tube, we want to use some distilled water so it wouldn't affect the pH. I'm gonna fill the tube up to the first line with the soil. Now that I fill it up with soil, we are going to take the green capsule 
and they're color coded with the lids of this tube so it's easy and then we are going to pour the powder into the tube and then we are going to fill the tube with water up to the fourth line you want to shake the liquid for about a minute or more until the soil is fully dissolved now we are going to let this sit in the corner while we do the rest of them now with our water we're going to mix a ratio of one to five and then we're going to mix this up now we're going to leave this to settle i now have my mixture and i probably let it sit for about an hour or more and depending on the soil density, you'll have to let it sit shorter or longer until the water gets a little clear. Now I'm going to extract. Slowly. That's one. And I'm going to, and I'm going to put the purple capsule inside of it. Now we're going to leave the four tubes to sit for around 10 minutes. Before we get on with the results of the test, make sure you guys peck that like button for Tweaker and we'll give her extra treats. Here's extra corn. So the first one is the pH and it's kind of looking in between the slightly acidic 6.5 and neutral which is the pH is 7. This one here is nitrogen. And it's kind of looking a little like kind of low in between low and medium. And you can't really see that well on the on the camera. But I'll pop up an image showing you close to the exact same colors with the chart so you can compare yourselves. The blue one kind of look like it's super high in phosphorus. And the orange one, which is potassium, looks like it's also in between medium and high. So the only thing we need to fix is really nitrogen and you could easily do that just by adding some composted manure or homemade compost and that should solve the problem. So that's the results of burying the logs in the raised bed. And do I think it's worth it? It absolutely is because when I'm squeezing out all the water out of the wood, any roots from my plants could go down and tap into that water source. Wood also encourages lots of worms and lots of mycelium, which also build healthy soil. But there are other things you can bury in your raised bed besides logs, like leaves, straw, and more, and you could save a ton of money doing that. So watch this video next to learn how I fill my very deep raised bed for a bargain and save over $800 just doing that. Bye! Let's